Welcome to the Necklace 11 X12 technology. Today I'd like to show you a basic comparison on what is better. There are a lot of people that still don't know for which cooling they should go with to cool down their CPU when not using the stock cooler. There obviously are two different methods on cooling down a CPU, air cooling and water cooling. In this video I will be comparing two Thermaltic products, a huge air cooler and a top of the line water cooler. This is the Thermaltic Frio Extreme Air Cooler and this is the Thermaltic Water 2.0 Extreme Water Cooler. As you can see, this air cooler or should I say air coolers in general are really big and can sometimes be hassle to install in smaller cases but also in the larger ones. On the bottom there are heat pipes to dissipate the heat and air CPU coolers generally are fairly heavy and so the motherboard can get bent a little after long term usage. This water cooler has a dual radiator and you need that when comparing against these huge air CPU coolers. Obviously water cooling is totally different. This radiator gets cooled down by the two fans and the coolant will so stay cool. This part here on the other side is the pump, this is what goes onto the CPU. But yeah, now let's see which performs better. But before I continue I'd like to tell you the positive and negative sides of these two cooling solutions. Both solutions offer good cooling performance, that's for sure. Both have negative points on the size. The air cooler has a too large heatsink sometimes and this can often be a hassle when working on a machine then. Even in larger cases but even the water cooler is fairly large. It has a large radiator and I have to say that most cases do not support dual radiators and this is what you need when wanting to compare against a huge air cooler but even for that one you would need a wider case but that's not hard to find. A major negative point is that once you've installed such a large air CPU cooler, it will cover up the memory slots and therefore you can't install any or more RAM. While the water cooler has lots of space for the memory, actually you can access all the slots without any problems. But the air cooler can look very mighty in your system as well. And for water coolers, keep in mind, there's always a possibility of the coolant to leak and therefore it will ruin some of your components if it leaks. But for your wallet, air coolers are mostly cheaper, while water coolers can cost you a lot more sometimes. And now for the enthusiasts, air coolers will pretty much cover up all the motherboard heatsinks on the top and so you can't see the beautiful motherboard anymore. This doesn't happen with a water cooler. So, these are some of the most important points I wanted to tell you, but now let's get on with the testing. This is my test system. As you can see, I'll be cooling down the Intel Core i7-3770K CPU, which is running at stock speeds, so nothing is overclocked. Although you normally would overclock when buying such coolers. Before I show you the temperatures, here's the air cooler installed. As you can see, it takes up a lot of space. While the water cooler doesn't use up as much space in the upper area of the motherboard, the radiator is mounted at the top. I really like the clean look here. Alright, at first let's take a look at the idle temperature results. The ambient room temperature is at 21 degrees Celsius by the way, which are 70 degrees Fahrenheit. On the left are the air cooler results and on the right the ones from the water cooler. On air I was able to cool down the CPU to let's say an average of 28 degrees Celsius, while on water I got the same 28 degrees Celsius. On average both coolers are only able to cool the processor down to 28 degrees Celsius, which are 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Good, but now to the more interesting test the temperature results on load. Both coolers seem to be cooling down the processor equally here too. At max the temperatures go up to 67 degrees Celsius, but on average the water cooler actually keeps the CPU temperature 1 to 2 degrees lower. But on average the air cooler keeps it at 66 degrees Celsius, which are 151 degrees Fahrenheit, while the water cooler keeps the CPU temperature at around 65 degrees Celsius, which are 149 degrees Fahrenheit. So, in the end I have to say, there's not much difference in terms of cooling performance, but there mostly is a major difference in price. So you can get a good air cooler a lot cheaper than any water cooling kit, that's for sure. I think water cooling would be more something for enthusiasts because of the clean look of the system afterwards. That way you can easily cool down the CPU just as good or even a little bit better than an air cooler and you have lots of room to work on upgrading the memory and so on. Another great benefit for water cooling would be, the pump is fairly small and doesn't cover up your beautiful motherboard and the weight isn't bad, it's very lightweight. Although there always is a chance of leaking. Yes, I know, this is very rare, but it can happen, nobody can guarantee that. But don't worry, there are even large air coolers out there that look fantastic too and perform good too. That would be the second option for an enthusiast. In the end, it's your choice on what you're going for. But I really hope I could help you with this quick comparison video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.